So now that we have our topic controller nicely built out, you might be thinking to yourself, well, how do I access, say, the database from inside of here? How do I go ahead and render a view? How do I take a topic ID, look it up in the database, and then show that on a page? Well, this is actually pretty straightforward, and we're gonna take a look at how we would do this within the topic controller. We're then gonna refactor it, so any other controllers that we create, we don't need to do too much work in. And then in the next part, we're gonna look at a full topics example where we can get a list of topics and then show an individual topic. So we're gonna be building this up uh, with a kind of real world example. So the first thing that we need to kind of dive into is how the container kind of works behind the scenes or more just looking at the structure of this. So if we come over to vendor, come over to slim, over to slim here, uh, we wanna open up our container just inside of here. So this is what we've been binding things into and we already kind of had a look at this earlier when we looked at our default settings. Now you can see that this extends pimple container, which is a, a dependency that Slim requires. And you can kind of have a look at this uh, with inside of Slim. If you look at Slim's composer.json file, this defines out which uh, dependency Slim itself uses. And we saw that earlier when we installed Slim. So this uses a container called pimple. So it uses its own dependency. But what it does do though, is it implements a specific container interface, which if we check up here, uses interop container container interface. So let's just take a look at this uh, just to see what it looks like. So this defines out which methods we should have in a container. And in this case, we have two, get and has. Now, if we just go over to our page over in our root, so let's come over to our roots here and we go ahead and we say app get, and we just kind of test this out in here. So let's say forward slash, create a normal closure just so we can test this out. We know that when we say something like this view render, what we're actually doing is kind of accessing a property here, which is really behind the scenes getting something. So we can actually say this get view render. So that is basically how the container is working behind the scenes, but actually accessing this as a property is just a shortcut. So the reason that this is important and the reason that I bring up the container interface is because what we can actually do is inject the container by its interface into our controllers. Now that sounds a little bit complicated, but let's just see how this works. So I'm gonna grab interop container container interface. I'm gonna come over to my topic controller and I'm gonna create a constructor inside of my topic controller. So when our topic controller is instantiated, we can inject things into here. So let's go ahead and do this. We can either do this like this and then go ahead and define out the container interface and then call it maybe C, or we can go ahead and pull this in at the top. So it would probably be a little bit cleaner to say use interop container container interface and then in here, just injecting container interface. Now what's happening behind the scenes is uh, it's looking up by this interface what's actually bound to this interface. And we know that the slim container, if again we just remind ourselves, implements this container interface. So what we'll actually do when we inject this container interface is get back our container. Really as simple as that. So we can prove this by doing a var dump on C and then just killing the page there. And now when we head over to a kind of topics page, you can see that we get that container object back. Now what this means is we can then set this to a property inside of here, and then within any other methods, we can access our container. So what I would usually do is keep the name as C because we need to reference this a lot. So it makes sense to keep this uh, nice and short. And I would create a protected property at the top, and then I would just set inside of here the property like so. And that is all we need to do. So now within index, show, or any other method that we create, we now have access to our container and that's all we need to do. So let's take a look at an example of this and then we'll kind of refactor this because uh, thinking about it this way, if say we were to create a new controller, we would have to do this all over again. So we're gonna look at a way that we can tidy this up and make it a lot easier for ourselves in the future. So let's start with creating a view. So if we come over to resources, views, let's just create a really simple view for our topics index. And I'm actually gonna put this inside of a separate folder. That kind of makes sense. And I'm gonna create a new file in here called index.twig. So we now have topics slash index.twig 
and let's just say topic index view just so we can uh, kind of differentiate between the view and the standard string we're returning. So now what I can do is inside of my topic controller, rather than returning all topics, I can return this C, which is our container, and then I can say view, render, and pass in my response. But here's where the problem lies. Where is our response? We know that when we define out a normal root, we go ahead and get that if we pass it in. This is injected into that closure. But is it injected into our control methods? Well, the answer is yes. So what we can actually do is just put request and response in there. And we actually get these injected in uh, in the way that we've defined out our roots here with our controller. So it just works in the same way. Again, it's there's really great support in STEM for controllers like this. So it just kind of works in the way that you expect it to. So now what I can do is choose in here the view. And we know that we have a topics folder and we have an index.twig file. So now using our container, we can just use anything on our container, whether that's our database, views, or anything else we add. So let's go over and refresh here. And we now get topic index view, simple as that. We now have the ability to use any item in our container. So now let's look at the problem where when I want to go ahead and create a new controller, so let's say we had a user controller, of course, what I have to do is just define everything out as normal. So I have to give this a namespace, which is fine. We have to do that for any class we create with inside of here. We create our user controller, and maybe we want to show a list of users. So we would immediately maybe define out an index method for all of our users. Now, in this case, what I would have to do is do exactly the same thing. So I'd have to copy this, go ahead and pop it in here. And I would have to go ahead and, of course, pull in my container interface if we'd imported it at the top. Now, you may not see anything immediately wrong with this, but as soon as we have common things shared between the same types of classes, it always makes sense to ex extract this out to uh, a base class, or in our case, it would be a base controller. So what I would normally do is inside of controllers, create a new file, and I would just call this either my base controller or you may just prefer to call this controller. It's a little bit shorter to type. And we can extend all of our controllers from this base controller. So let's go ahead and just define this out. We'll get this working and then we'll move on to the next part where we're gonna look at a full example of uh, bringing this all together. So the namespace here, again, it would live under app and controllers, but this time we would have a class of controller. Now, we don't ever want to instantiate this controller on its own because its job is to just provide any controllers we create with the same code so we don't have to duplicate code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an abstract class. This just means that we can't use this controller on its own. There's no need. Its sole purpose is just to serve our other controllers. So that's why I add the abstract uh, keyword just in there. So if we just come over to user controller, I'm going to get rid of this because we don't want to have to do this. And I'm going to get rid of this here. So that's already cleaned that up. And I'm going to instead put this all inside of here. And once again, what we'd have to do is pull over our uh, container interface into here because we are using it. And we can now tidy up our topic controller as well. So I can get rid of all of this. I can get rid of this. And now we have two nice, clean controllers. Now, of course, we can't forget to extend this base controller. So over in topic controller, what we would now do is extend our base controller. And then in user controller, we would do the same, extend our base controller. Now, we know that this will return a list of users, so users index. So we can go ahead and define out a route for this as well. So let's just copy one of these, come over here and add this in. So I'm just going to make this super simple and we're going to say app get slash users. We're going to use our user controller so we can duplicate this down as well to change this over just so we have that in there. And we're using the index method. So we now have the ability to get a list of users and get a list of topics. So this now will just work in exactly the same way. This will still work because we've extended our base controller and we have access to that property. So let's come over to the browser, give that a refresh, and it works in exactly the same way as well as being able to hit forward slash users. It again works in exactly the same way. And we can now use dependencies from our container in any class that we create or more appropriately, any controller that we create.